This is the age case, make sure you like and subscribe and hit the bell. I just wanted to talk about a certain area of the UK, Hampshire and Berkshire, I believe, between sort of Salisbury, Andover and Newbury. Seems to be a lot of activity happening in this area. 77th Brigade at the Denison Barracks is situated if you look to the north of the map and it's where the UK Army have created a special force on Facebook, Twitter and Bit and what I believe is BitChute to sort of censor media coming through and BitChute which is down in and over the head HQ is a place of alternate media where stuff gets through. We also have the UK Army headquarters situated on the other side of Andover. It's just a hunch but I'm believing that BitChute was kind of created to get all of the very small percentage of the population over to BitChute from Facebook and Twitter so that they can keep the majority brainwashed on these platforms with their news. A bit like brand YouTube, there's been a lot of drama and saga and maybe hacking and suing going on over at brand YouTube. Also down the road is Port and Down, very important biopharma science campus with lots of laboratories. It's also where the Russians were found to be poisoned in Salisbury. And then up the road from there is the Quintech, and Quintech are involved in a lot of things. They're pretty similar to what Circo is. They're 5G, resilience, advanced warfare, aerial intelligence, many sort of things around warfare. So these companies are all situated in, I'd say, a 40 mile radius of Hampshire. Would be maybe a good idea for auditors to go and test all these out in a day. I've seen an order to do a quintet one outside stood and I'm sure I've seen people go to Port and Down but maybe one of the auditors out there could go and check this out but it's all situated in the 40 mile radius like I say so if we was to do maybe a little bit of sort of Abbott maths the 13 companies sorry the eight five bits of the army are quite good for the government but if we use a bit of overkill maths i know this isn't some threat to anybody's family this is just some evidence that i'm laying out i've heard overkill say that when all this shit's over he wants to move to southampton or andover and andover's what two miles away from the 77th brigades and they always call themselves the 79th brigade so i'm just kind of putting two and two together and i'm really thinking that mr john overshill is part of the 77th brigade with all this evidence that i'm I'm sort of laying out here always going on about the 79th brigade so i'm just thinking that oh we could maybe use a bit of lion fart maths and well brother if it doesn't resonate in my heart then it can't be real so what actually is the 77th brigade this word that keeps getting banded around if you're seen as a troll or you're not quite complying with the certain room that you're in you're called a 77th brigade troll 77th brigade that their role is to sit in youtube and create accounts to disrupt the order of people spreading information to less than a thousand people i just there's no point or reason to do that they have bigger fish to fry so what actually is it it's security assistance group the sag's mission was to work with sort of cross whitehall agencies to achieve the goal of defence engagement and building stability over street overseas strategies. The 77th Brigade was created to draw together hosts of existing and developing capabilities essential to meet the challenges of modern conflict and warfare. The unit's objectives were pretty much similar to the SAGs and they were also a follow-on from the 15 POG and what the 15 POG was the 15 Psychological Operations Group which was a tri-service or purple military unit formerly parented by the military intelligence brigade following the gulf war the uk government formed a shadow psyops unit called the 15 psyops group but the current structure of the 77th brigade which took over the 15 pog defense cultural specialist unit which is planning support on sort of behavioral analysis which they will give to the behavioral team then you have task group which provides highly deployable specialists to other parts of the army forces and government organizations quickly you have outreach groups which provide professional specialists in security capacity and building defense 
You have the digital operations group, which delivers influencing activities and products across a range of communication types and platforms such as Twitter, Facebook, I'd even say they go into YouTube. And, and then we have the Staff Corps, a specialist army reserve unit providing strategic level consult to the MOD and wider government, the GCHQ. So what the 77th Brigade actually does is they use unorthodox tactics to basically stop the Russians or the Americans or the EU or individuals from giving false information to British people and then British people spreading that information. That is what their job is. Their job is not to sit in YouTube channels or hangouts or whatever Discord you've got and disrupt or play foul or try to dox people. That's not their job. They don't do that. That's I would say 95% of that will just be individuals who, who want to cause division and hate for the sake of causing division and hate or they've found that they will be popular from doing so or they've got a chip on their shoulder from someone they're jealous of someone blah de blah there's many reasons why people do this but then you have the cabinet offices behavioral insights team and other sort of behavioral teams that nudge society and push information even false information onto society so it stops them from maybe pushing the real truth which is in opposition to the government it could be financially it could be sort of a matter of national security is the reason why they have done this So the government censorship network as set out by the UK column, go check out their daily reports on their YouTube channel, consists of the Joint Biosecurity Centre, MI6, which is international intelligence, the MI5, which is within the UK, the GCHQ, which gathers intelligence and data on a mass scale and gives it to the government, Crown and Army on a daily basis. And this is all led by National Security Council, set up by the Cabinet Office which has its own rapid response unit communications team the 13th signals who share intelligence with whitehall the media and the behavioral teams the 77th brigade as mentioned before engage in online warfare and purposely are giving out misinformation and lies to the people as so they can control the honey pots and the sort of controlled opposition you then have the Five Eyes Echelon system which gathers international data and intelligence technology. Um, this is sort of online and through communications, uh, phones, computers. Then we have the new DCMS fake news unit, the Hot 18 team set up on the 24th of November who will excel uh, the sort of corruption, lies, science denialism and hate onto the people in a more public fashion. They're basically just being open with it all now and telling us what they're doing. And there's a lot of censorship going on and we can see it within the groups, but only a small number of the population can actually see that this is going on and um, we're trying to get more of this information out across many different channels and people youtube channels so we need to sort of research these people more and spread uh, the information around a little bit more of what this crony corrupt government is doing to the people of the uk at the moment the issue the British Army's had, and they've been worrying about this for a good 10 years at least, is the fact that a smaller, more versatile, more flexible enemy than the large institution that the Army is, uh, that those smaller organisations are better able to uh, be reactive and proactive in the, in the media space in a way that um, the British Army cannot. So in Afghanistan, it found that the Taliban was very effective at, at messaging um, both to domestic audiences and to the international audiences in a way that the British Army found very hard to counter. If the 77th Brigade are not censoring us and trying to disrupt us in our rooms, it must be the Cabinet Office passing it on to COBRA, to the police, or Cabinet Office to Common Purpose, the Tavistock Institute, and the Behavioural Insights team. This is basically what is happening around Whitehall. The doctrine is set 
by the government and Whitehall and then it goes down the line and the media is then instructed as to how and managed as to how they should pass the information on to society and then it goes round and it gets passed down. The GCHQ, which is in Cheltenham, commonly known as the GCHQ, it's an intelligence and security organisation responsible for signals, intelligence and information assurance to the government, armed forces and the United Kingdom. Based in a donut in the suburbs of Cheltenham, it's responsible for the country's Secretary of State Foreign and Commonwealth Affairs, but is not part of the Foreign Office. It is where many different agencies are working within, and in 2003, Edward Snowden revealed that the agency was part of a process of collecting online telephone data via Tempora program which is part of the UK government. The GCHQ's legal basis is enshrined in the Intelligence Services Act 1994 and has three different sections. The Prime Minister nominates cross-party members to an intelligence and security committee to then scrutinise and put the GCHQ to the test with the Justice and Security Act 2013 to provide further access in, to investigatory powers. Then there's the Joint Threat Research Intelligence Group, which is a unit of the government's communication headquarters at GCHQ, the British Intelligence Agency, which is linked to the MI5 and the MI6. The intelligence of the JTRIG was revealed as part of a global surveillance disclosures in documents leaked by the NSA's Edward Snowden. Operational method techniques, all of JTRIG's operations are conducted using cyber technology. Staff described a range of methods techniques that have been used to date for the following effects operations. These include uploading YouTube videos containing persuasive communications to discredit, promote distrust, dissuade, deter, delay and disrupt any movement. Setting up Facebook groups, forums, blogs and Twitter accounts that encourage and monitor discussion on a topic to discredit, promote distrust, dissuade, deter, delay and disrupt. Establishing online alias personalities, sock accounts and fake online people who support the communications or messages in YouTube videos, Facebook groups, forums, blogs, etc. which are usually either pseudoscience, false news or something leading people to the honeypots. Establishing online aliases, personalities who support other aliases, sending spoof emails, text messages from a fake person or mimicking a real person to discredit, promote distrust, dissuade, deceive, deter, delay or disrupt. Providing spoof online resources such as magazines and books that provide inaccurate information to again the DDDDDs. Providing online access to uncensored material to disrupt. Sending instant messages to specific individuals giving them instructions for accessing uncensored websites. Setting up spoof trade sites or sellers. Interrupting i.e. filtering, deleting, creating or modifying web pages, communications between real customers and and traders to deny, disrupt, delay, deceive, dissuade and deter. Taking control of online websites. Again, denial of telephone and computer services. Hosting target online communication websites. Contacting host websites, asking them to remove material and basically just being trolls within YouTube live streams, Twitter feeds, Facebook pages and they can ask people who work within say Facebook and YouTube to remove posts that will usually go against the UK government or the narrative that is being pushed and they can easily get involved in such quests like this. In 2011, the JTRIG conducted denial of service attacks, DOS, on the activist group Anonymous. Other JTRIG targets have included governments of Iran, Taliban, Afghanistan and many others. Online false flag operations are also used by JTRIG against targets. JTRIG have also changed photographs on social media sites as well as emailing and texting colleagues and neighbours with unsavoury information and false information about targeted individuals which they can then pass on through the social media sites to other people and it just creates again these bubbles and echo chambers from where small groups are broken up and broken up and broken up and people 
can't really create a critical mass group that will oppose the government in whatever it would be for i.e the coronavirus or corruption within government there's many things that are, people are angry about with the government in 2015 nsa files published by glenn greenwald revealed new details about jtrig's work at covertly manipulating online communities and internal activities within the uk uk agencies that jtrig says it cooperates with include the metropolitan police, the MI5, the NNCA, the NSA, the HMRC, the NPOIU. It's also involved in what it calls missions, with various other agencies described as customers, including the Bank of England, the Department of Children's School and Families. Info weapons held or being deployed by JTRIG can be used to send bulk emails, spoof SMM messages, impersonate Facebook posts for individuals or entire countries, artificially increase traffic to a website, and change the outcome of online polls. These are just some of the things that the JTRIG and GCHQ have been involved in over the years. Intelligence has a wide diversity of tools for cyber spying and data manipulation. That's what's been revealed in a document recently leaked by whistleblower Edward Snowden. Social network accounts are no longer private. Agents can access data, even hidden, and disable the page if they find it suspicious. And they can even tap into Skype calls and use private email to send spoof letters. How much you spend on eBay or what online polls you have participated in, all of this is also visible to the agents. There's more than 100 projects in the listing for GCHQ's Joint Threat Research intelligence group they've all got quite eccentric code names here you've got angry pirates a tool that will permanently disable a target's account on their computer now in a statement to rt gchq say that they are not at fault well despite what gchq has said campaigners are saying that if true the allegations are extremely serious A professor at a university in London, the University College London, found a new vulnerability in a GCHQ encryption protocol. You've probably heard of the GCHQ, it's basically London's version of the NSA. In any case, Dr. Stephen Murdoch claims to have found a backdoor in the Mikey Saki encryption protocol, which is something the uh, GCHQ actually made to help encrypt voice over IP traffic and maybe video traffic as well. And by the way, while this is a government encryption protocol. A secure course which uses this protocol is open source. So in the future, we might see other public products using this encryption protocol. Now, I won't describe this alleged cryptography backdoor in any technical detail. If you want that type of depth, be sure to check out Dr. Murdoch's blog post as it goes into a lot of detail. But at a high level, it really comes down to the fact that there's this master private key. Basically, service providers can have a master private key for this encryption. That means after you've sent encrypted communication, someone like the GCHQ can use this master private key to potentially decrypt your communications. So should you worry about this? Well, right now, Mikey Saki doesn't seem to be a protocol that's used in a lot of stuff, but since it is open source, you might want to keep an eye on it. If you ever find products that use it, that essentially means the government might have an option of seeing into your encrypted traffic. This isn't the first time governments have been alleged to have backdoors and encryption. A while ago, the NSA created an elliptical curve cryptography protocol that apparently also had a weakness that caused a backdoor. And apparently there's some modern security and routing products from Juniper that might use this particular protocol. MI5 and MI6 are both intelligence agencies but do different things. The MI5 is responsible for protecting the UK, its citizens and interests at home and overseas against the threats to national security. The MI6 is responsible for gathering intelligence outside the UK in support of the government's security, defence, foreign and economy policies. MI5 is headed by Ken McAllen. MI6 is headed by Alex Younger. MI5 is answerable to the Home Secretary. MI6 is answerable to the Foreign Secretary. MI5's headquarters are Thames, London. MI6 is Vauxhall Cross, the UK's joint 
Terrorism Analysis Center, JTAC, analyzes intelligence relating to international terrorism and produces classified assessments of threats to the UK government, department and agencies. Here's a map of all the army and secret bases around the UK. The nearest one to me, near Crawley, Cophurst, is the Langhurst secret base, probably the nearest one to me, which is near East Grinstead. Goldman Sachs Data Center, which is not far from me, but there isn't really many in sort of my area. Anyway, nothing at all, really. So then if we have a little, maybe zoom out and we go to some more important places, such as, uh, we'll have a look for the 77th Brigade, the ABRO Andover and another secret base, I'm not too sure what that's to do with Tidwood Co College, that's to do with the army. Port and Down, this is one of the biggest sort of science facilities and it's stretched over a huge site. There's different parts to the Port and Down, Energetics, uh, that's the main secret base that they've got there, got the scientific bases. Explosives facilities, and this is all within Hampshire. There's a lot of things around the sort of the south of England, but more into the centre towards Southampton and Hampshire. I think it's because there's a port there. And it's more inland, just a little bit, and it's away from London. So then, if we go up to Newbury. Missile Defence Nuclear Command RAF There's a lot of these um, secret junctions on uh, motorways for the police and army I suppose that a lot of people don't know about uh, MOD storage and then the Denison Barracks, where the 77th Brigade is situated just outside Little Hungerford, which is in Berkshire, I believe. So uh, more RAF, more of those secret junctions, a few bunkers. Go down to Southampton, there's some Quinta Q uh, places down here, SOC bunkers, PSD, I'm not too sure, I'll have a look into that in a sec. Going over to Cornwall and Devon, Signals Research, Hamsworthy, Dean Hill, that's, that's a, quite a big place. the country and we're going to go and have a look for the Echelon system which is Menwith Hill just outside Harrogate above Leeds Five Eyes Echelon system that the NSA and the GCHQ of the UK use. It's the Five Eyes, the New Zealand, Australia, Canada, the UK and America. It's their joint intelligence system. And Menwith Hill is it's quite a big uh, place. One of the three main places in the UK, I would say, after the GCHQ and pour them down. So that was Menwith Hill. Let's have a look for GCHQ, which is Cheltenham. 
all of these places would be good for auditors to go visit. Uh, there's a number of GCHQ centres around Cheltenham. But the main one is Ben Hall. I'm just gonna go through. Worth. Uh, radio station towers, plenty of these around the UK, listening in, especially back in the World Wars, where we had Bletchley Park, which was the place where they cracked the Nazis Enigma code. Lockheed Martin. The secret junctions. I think it's maybe so police can get onto motorways quicker. They know where the person is that they're trying to catch and they can catch them out on either end. It's probably one many of those around the country. RGHQ and AAOR. I know what that is, but. Cleave Hill Communications. It's another thing to do with the GCHQ and the UK Army. And this is all near Gloucester, Swindon, Cheltenham. GCHQ Ben Hall is the place where the main donut shaped building of the GCHQ headquarters is just outside Cheltenham as you can see the donut shape Fiddler's Green Park I think it's, it was it is so these are just some of the major places in the UK I couldn't tell you how many there are I haven't counted some in London some boiler rooms and Important places. Brill Place, Camden. BT Tower of London. Metropolitan Police, the SEGS Group. I've mentioned this in a video before. The GCS in Bermondsey. Uh, SIS, former offices, not anymore. MI6 HQ, Vauxhall Cross. So CA and the NCA, MI5 HQ, Thomas House, GCHQ, Palmer Street, Cabinet Office, Whitehall, the MOD, Main Buildings in Whitehall, Admiralty, Citadel, the MOD, Metropolitan, Metropolitan Police, Freemasons Hall, which is across the road from BBC, places and there's an MI5 boiler room situated there so they're the main ones in sort of London can't really see any in the city of London GCHQ Keston Common or apartments known as the Crescent Holly Holwood Only one in Northern Ireland, MI5 HQ, Palace Barracks, Hollywood, Belfast. Um, missile tracking on St Kilda, up in Scotland, the Isle of Lewis. We've got the couple of RAF domestic camps. RAF and NATO as well. NATO have got radio comms sites there. Quinta Q base, more Quinta Q bases. Uh, Butech, got more naval and NATO 
Lock Eve, NATO Lock Eve, JSMTW, northernly one is Garvey Island, Cape Raff, a secret base right at the top of Scotland. Yeah, all seem to be just GCHQ and naval bases up the top there. 